Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at how you can distribute your application to your end user. So this might seem um, kind of a strange point to insert this tutorial in the series but the fact is, to tell you the truth, that I um, skipped accidentally from tutorial 57 to tutorial 59 and that's why I've kind of gone back and inserted 58 here. And this is, of course, something that everyone needs to know, so here is as good a place to put it as any. Um, so to distribute your application, um, the first step, at least, uh, and possibly the only step you'll need, is to create a runnable jar file. That's a jar file that you can, um, a dot .jar file, that you can run just by clicking on. Um, and your file will run uh, in Windows 7 and um, I presume, although I don't know, that it will also run on the Mac because historically Macintoshes have supported Java better than Windows and presumably Linux as well. So let's see how that works. And You want to make sure that you've got um, a fairly recent version of Eclipse. So here I've got, um, I don't know what it is, I think it's 3.7 but um, the functionality that we need was actually added in um, Eclipse 3.5, so um, update your Eclipse to a recent version if you have if you've got an old version. Now, assuming you've got a recent version of Eclipse, um, right-click your project folder and go to Export. And if your Eclipse is 3.5 or greater, you will have this option, Runnable Jar File, in here, and that's what you need. Let's click Next. And uh, on this screen um, here, you have to select the run configuration for your application. And the run configuration um, basically just says which um, main to run when the jar's double clicked. So um, in this case, I've got a whole massive bunch of run configurations here uh, because um, you get um, a run configuration is created whenever you run an application basically and you can rename these configurations if you want um, up here in um, this little arrow by the run green run menu if you click on that run configurations you'll be able to um, edit the name of your the names of your applicant of your configurations here but I won't do that here um, I'll just go to this um, export runnable jar option and I can recognize the right run configuration here because it's got the name of my project in it, Swing58. Um, so we see here the, the launch configuration. Um, there's one uh, here, um, Swing58, distributing your application. So I know that's the right one. And if I had renamed it via the green run button, then that name would appear here, which might be simpler. Anyway, so you have to select the right launch configuration um, and uh, you need to select your export destination here. So I'm going to set this to um, C, let's see, C uh, tutorial swing and I'm going to export this as, um, I don't know, I'll call it uh, db, db, db app.jar. So this is basically your, your runnable program. And I'm going to click Save there. And um, these options are quite important. Um, what this means is uh, to, to, to run our app, we've used um, a, a JDBC um, add-on library that's in a, in a jar file that I added via the build path of the project earlier on. And if you're using any, um, any extra jar files, um, then you need to think about them here and your choices are basically you could ex your jar files will contain class dot class files and you can either extract the jar files get the class files out and repackage them into your runnable jar which is this option and that will uh, usually work but sometimes you can have problems with it the safest option is package required libraries into generated jar which will take any jar files that you've used and put them in your runnable jar um, a jar file just being basically a bit like a zip file really and the other option is copy required libraries into a subfolder next to the generated jar and if you choose that option you're going to have to distribute 
your um, the jar files that you may have used with your application. So probably what you want is this middle option here. Once you've done that, it's pretty simple. Just click Finish. And usually you'll get some um, warnings, but you shouldn't get any errors. Uh, and these are just compile warnings. And I've been um, ignoring uh, a lot of uh, compiler warnings because uh, Eclipse will warn you. Um, it will say that um, you you have not. It, it always brings up this warning. You have not gen um, added a. I think it's called serial UID or something to your um, to your class. But um, since we haven't needed um, to add, we haven't needed to serialize these classes, then we haven't needed to add that ID. Um, and if you want these warnings to go away, you just have to click on the warning icons, the little yellow warning icons in your Java files in Eclipse and get it to add a serialization UID. But the bottom line is you can usually ignore these warnings. So click OK as long as you've not got any errors. And now, hopefully, I've um, generated my runnable jar, and I can go to the folder that I um, put it in. And here it is, dbapp.jar. And if I double-click that, um, it will run my application. Um, and if I click Connect, if everything's gone right, then it will connect just fine to my database. Um, so um, that's how you can generate a runnable jar. And if you um, use Windows a lot and you, or, so all you have to do basically is uh, email or send somehow this runnable jar to your end user. And of course, if you've written a database application, you'll have to make sure that the URL that connects to your database, that that's a URL that can be reached from their computer. Um, but um, if you want uh, like a .exe file for Windows, um, as you can see, a, a runnable jar is fine in Windows 7, but if you particularly want a .exe, then I recommend a tool called JSmooth. Um, so just search for JSmooth, that's J um, and then the word smooth, or one word, in Google. And that's a free tool that you can use to take your runnable jars and turn them into .exe files, which will even prompt the user to download the um, necessary Java runtime files if they're missing from the user's computer. So that's a nice extra touch, but most of the time all you really need is this runnable jar. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, join me again next time, and until next time, happy coding.